Hello children, let me welcome you to the virtual class of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher. Children, we are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic and because of that we are not able to go to school but that doesn't mean we are going to stop learning. So we are going to do many lessons which are very interesting from your textbook through the virtual class here. So let us do a lesson in English today. So children, look at the image on your screen now. So what do you see? You see the beautiful surroundings. You see a lovely natural landscape. You can see trees, you can see uh, grass, you can see clouds, the sky and then you can see one thing about which we are going to learn today. So this is a lesson in standard 7th English. And that thing, that natural thing that we are going to learn about today is the brook. So this is lesson number 3.4 from your English textbook, which is a pore. Now children, the brook means what? So you can understand here, you can see what the trees are, you know what trees are, you know about the rocks, you know about the grass, you know about the skies. So definitely there is a, some a water body which is flowing here which could be the brook. Alright, so this is a beautiful poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson and in a way you can say that this is a story of the brook. Now you must have heard about autobiographies, isn't it? Autobiography means when you are writing your own story. So in a way here the brook is trying to tell you your its own story. So the brook is telling you its story. So now what is a brook? A brook is a small stream. So you cannot call it a river because rivers are large in size. But brook is a small stream and these brooks flow along and then finally they go and meet the river. So the brooks are you can say those water bodies which go and meet the river. Alright. Now before going and reading the poem, children, let us uh, talk a little bit about the poet. So, who is the poet? Who is the person who's written this poem? His name is Alfred Lord Tennyson. Now, Alfred Tennyson was a British poet. That is, he belonged to Britain. He was the poet laureate during much of Queen Victoria's reign. So, he was the official poet. He was the court poet during the rule of Queen Victoria. And not only in those times, but even in today's times, he remains one of the most popular British poets. So, of all the po poets which have been or lived in Britain, Alfred Lord Tennyson is still very, very popular. So, people still read his poems. Okay, they still appreciate his poems. In 1829, Tennyson was awarded the Chancellor's Gold Medal at Cambridge for one of his first pieces that is Timbuktu. So he wrote a poem called Timbuktu and for that he was given a gold medal. So this is just one of his many different achievements. So let us see what the poem is and what story the brook has to tell about itself. Now before we start the poem children let me tell you that it is a long one. Okay, so I will read the poem and I will try to show you pictures wherever possible and I will also try to explain the lines of the poem to you. So come on, let's go and let's start with reading the poem. So what is the name of the poem? The Brook. So everywhere on each page I have kept a small brook for you to see in the uh, corner. Okay, in the left hand corner. I have kept a small brook so that you can look at it and you can realize what the meaning of a brook is. So come on, I am going to uh, mark the line which I am reading with a star. So you need, uh, so you can understand where I am. You can at the same time open your English textbooks and read with me. Alright, so come on, let me start. So what is the name of the lesson? It is a 3.4, the brook. I come from haunts of coot and hern. Now coot and hern are types of birds. 
okay which are uh, water birds you can say so i come from haunts haunts means gatherings where there are lots of these birds i make a sudden sally and spark sparkle among out among the ferns so you know what are ferns ferns are ferns are these kind of grass okay to bicker down a valley so i come flowing and i take turns and i also go through the fern i flow where there are birds and then i go down a valley next line by 30 hills i hurry down or slip between the ridges now what are ridges ridges are narrow paths along the mountains okay so 30 hills i hurry down so i cross so many hills and i come the brook or the stream it crosses so many different hills and it comes between the ridges also we will look at some meanings later by 20 thorps a little town and half a hundred bridges so it passes 20 thorps thorps means small villages where there are very few houses it passes a town also and it also it goes under half a hundred bridges okay so these are all the places that the brook crosses before it reaches the river it goes through places where there are birds it goes through places where there are fern it goes down a valley it runs along the hills between the ridges by the thorps through the little town and under so many hundred bridges also next line the last by philip's farm i flow so there is someone called philip so it flows it goes by philip's farm also to join the brimming river so the river also always has got so much water it already has got so much water it is already brimming the water is about to overflow but the brook the stream nevertheless it goes and it joins the river for men may come and men may go but i go on for ever so men may come and men may go means people uh, are born and people die okay but the river the stream it goes on flowing for men may come and men may go but i go on for ever okay moving on to the next lines of the poem i chatter over stony ways where there are stones i chatter means i make a noise in little sharps and trebles so i make small sounds and i also make shrill sounds sometimes big sounds i bubble into eddying bays i babble on the pebbles so i bubble when there are eddying eddying means when water is going in a circle so i there i go and i become a bubble and also i babble i means i make noise okay uh, babbling is a quality of human beings people who go on talking continuously at a fast speed we say that they are babbling but here the brook is also saying that it babbles with many a curve my banks i fret by many a field and fallow so field and fallow means open farmlands so it not only curves uh, through the birds or through the ferns but it also goes through the fields and fallows and many a fairy foreland set with willow weed and mallow so what is willow weed and mallow it is these kind of beautiful small plants which can also be called as weeds unnecessary plants but at the same time they look very beautiful also so sometimes in the fields you will see these kind of weeds you will see these kind of mallow so the brook it flows through these places also okay i chatter chatter as i flow so i make a lot of sound when i flow i do not flow silently i chatter chatter as i flow to join the brimming river so where do i go finally after doing all this where do i go i go to join the brimming river 
for men may come and men may go, but I go on for ever. So men come and men go, but then I go on for ever. I will always, always keep flowing. That is what the brook wants to tell us. Okay, let's move on and read the next few lines of the poem. I wind about and in and out. So wind about means I take turns and turns and I go. With here a blossom sailing. A blossom sailing means a flower falls into the uh, stream or into the brook. And the flower also sails along with the water which is there in the brook. And here and there a lusty trout. Now what is a trout children? A trout is a kind of a fish which is found. Okay, in fresh water. Now we all know that brooks means they are streams. So there is fresh water in them. And here and there a lusty trout. And here and there a grayling. Now graylings are also a kind of freshwater fish. So in the water, what can you see? You can see some blossoms or some flowers sailing. Along with that, you can also see different kind of fish in the water, in the brook. Okay, and here and there a foamy flake upon me as I travel. So sometimes there is a foam when, there, when it passes over the stones, when it passes over the rock, you will see some kind of foam. Foam means when you, uh, when you lather soap, when you put soap in water and when you uh, rub it properly, there is one kind of, you can say foam. Okay, the same way sometimes there is foam also in the water of the brook. With many a silvery water break above the golden gravel. So sometimes the gravel or the sand is golden in color. Alright. And the water is silvery in color. The water shines like silver. And if you look below the water, under the brook, you will see at the bottom, there is golden color gravel. Alright. And draw them all along and flow, but I take all these things along with me, says the brook, to join the brimming river. For men may come and men may go, but I go on for ever. So the same lines are repeated, see, at the end of each page. For men may come and men may go, that means people might live, people might die, I don't care. I keep on flowing and joining the river. That means the brook is something which is permanent on this earth. That means nature is something which is permanently there on the earth. We people, human beings, we are temporary. Today we are alive, tomorrow we will all be dead. But the rivers, the mountains, they will be as it is wherever they are. That is the beauty of nature. Then let's go to the next last part of the poem. I slip, I slide, I gloom, I glance. So, the river cannot do all this, okay? The river is not a human being. There is a lot of personification over here. Personification means it is said when you read the lines of the poem, you will feel that you are talking about a human being and not about a, a non-living thing. That is, a river is a non-living thing. It doesn't have life. It says that I slip and I slide and I gloom. That is, I get Sad sometimes and I look around among my swimming, swig, skimming swallows. I make the netted sunbeam dance against my sandy shadows. So I also allow the sun rays to enter into me and also dance on the sand below me. So the river is talking, the brook is talking about itself over here. It is talking about its life. Okay, and how even though it doesn't have a life, alright, it is an inanimate object, it is a non-living thing. But the poet has described it in such a manner that you will actually feel that the brook has got a life of itself. I murmur under moons and stars. Murmuring means making a sound with your mouth. In brambly wilderness. Brambly means what? Where there is a lot of, you say, na, thorns. When there are a lot of thorny bushes. So that is called as brambly. Wilderness means wild area or a forest area. I linger by my shingly bars 
I loiter around my cresses. That means sometimes I flow very fast and sometimes I linger and I loiter. Linger means I go slow. I loiter means I wait for some time. Okay. And out again, I curve and flow to join the brimming river. After waiting, after lingering, after loitering, again I curve. When there is a curve, the water stops there for some time. Isn't it? That is why they say it is lingering and loitering. Again it curves and it flows to join the brimming river. For men may come and men may go. But I go on forever. So this is an excerpt from the poem The Brook by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Alright. In a way, what did we do when we read the entire poem? We talked about the journey of the brook till it reaches the river, till it gets mixed up with the river. Okay, once it joins the river, then it is not a brook anymore. It is a river. So that is what we have learned about in this particular poem. Now we will go to some exercises which are there in your textbook, children. And the first exercise is asking us to find out meanings of the following words or phrases. So some of the meanings I will give you and the remaining I will leave it to you and the dictionary. So when you are learning a language, the dictionary is your best friend. So go to your dictionary and find out the meanings of certain words whereas some I will give it to you now. So the first word is ridges. So what is the meaning of ridges children? Ridges means long narrow hilltops or mountain ranges. So you can see the hills they are long and they are narrow also. These are called as ridges. What about brimming? Brimming means be full to the point of overflowing. Now look at this glass of water. One more drop and the water will spill over. It will overflow. That is why we say that the glass is brimming. It is so full that it will overflow very soon. Okay? Then what is the meaning of eddying? Eddying means to move in a circular way. So you have water which moves in a circular way sometimes. You have air. Okay? You have a gas also which moves in a circular way. So, eddying means moving in a circular manner. Then we have the next meaning which is to babble. So, like I told you, what is the meaning of babbling? Babbling means to talk very rapidly. So, remember these are all examples of personification. You are personifying a river or a brook because water cannot talk. Okay? So, babel means to talk rapidly. Now, like I told you, there are some more meanings here. I am sure I have told you the meanings. Okay? Of fallow, of trout, of netted. Even then, open your dictionary, find out the meaning and also try to figure out how a fallow would look like. And I have already shown you the picture of a trout. Okay? So, this is your assignment. Pick up your dictionary and find out the meanings to these words. Moving on. Let us go to some more exercises. So you are supposed to spot and write any three alliterative phrases or sentences from the poem. Now before we go and try to spot and write the alliterative phrases or sentences, let us try to understand what is the meaning of alliterative phrases or what is the meaning of alliterative sentences. You must have heard about the figure of speech alliteration. Isn't it? So this is very closely related to that. So let's see. Alliterative phrases and sentences are those in which the same sound is repeated. So when a particular sound is repeated again and again, then we say that they are alliterative phrases or sentences. So come on, I'll leave you to pause the video here for a second. And try to find out the answer here. Try to search out for at least three alliterative phrases. And then you can check whether your answers are correct. So the first one is, I made a sudden 
Sally. So see the sound of S is repeated here. I made a sudden Sally. The sound of the letter S is repeated. Let's move on and see one more sentence. The third one is your assignment. I bubble into a ding base. I bubble into a ding base. So what sound is repeated children? The sound of the letter B is repeated over here. Okay. So these are some alliterative sentences. Now they asked you to find out three alliterative sentences. So come on search for the third one. See which is the third alliterative sentence over here. Okay. Come on let's move on. And now we have an exercise on uh, grammar or vocabulary as you say. You are supposed to list out the prepositions in the poem. Now before we go and talk about uh, prepositions, let us try and understand what the meaning of a preposition is. So a preposition is a word which is placed before a noun or a pronoun to show its relation with something else in the sentence. So when you try to uh, figure out or when you try to convey the relation between certain things, okay, then that particular word which you use is called as a preposition. Let us look at some more examples here. So see, these are all prepositions. Beside, along, at, in, across, into, after, through, to, about, under. You can find a long, long, exhaustive list of prepositions. So all these words are prepositions. Okay. See, you can pause the video here and you can leisurely read all these words. So, with, at, from, into, during, including, until, against, among, throughout and see so many other words. The easier ones which we always use are upon, of, to, in, for, on, by, Okay, before, between, behind, beyond, after, all these are examples of preposition. So I will leave you again to pause this video here and read all these words carefully. So these are all examples of prepositions. Now let's come to the exercise. What are the prepositions from the poem? I will again give you a few examples. The remaining you will have to do it yourself. So see, slip between the ridges is an example of a preposition. Then you have, I chatter over stony ways. So that's again an example of a preposition. I bubble into eddying bays is an example of a preposition. I babble on the pebbles. So see, between, over, into, on, these are all various examples of prepositions from the poem. If you read the poem properly, again, I'm sure you will be able to find out many more examples of preposition from this particular poem. Okay? You have one more exercise here which says, list the phrases which have the expression many a. So, which are the phrases here which have the expression many a? So, let me show you a few and then I will leave you to find out the others. Or you can, if you do not find those expressions in the poem, you can look at any a newspaper, any magazine and try to pick up the sentences where this particular phrase is there. So, from that uh, poem, you have these particular phrases, by many a field and fallow. Then you have, and many a fairy Poland set and you also have this sentence which is with many a silvery water break. Okay children, so see today we saw the poem The Brook which is lesson number 3.4 from your English textbook. We talked about the meaning of the brook, 
we talked a little bit about the poet and we also read the poem and I tried to explain the meaning of the poem in the best possible manner. We also looked at many beautiful images related to the poem. And also after that we did a few exercises in grammar and vocabulary and also on comprehension. Okay, so that is all as far as this particular lesson 3.4, the brook is concerned. So children, now you have watched the video. So after you watch the video now, you will have to complete a few simple tasks. Now you might have watched the video on your computers or your laptops or your mobile phones. Now after you watch the video, what will you do? You will please go to the description box which is given below the video. So what is the description box? See the description box looks like this. Alright. And after you go to the description box, you will see that there are a few questions there. Now what are these questions about? These questions are about the lesson that we just learned or the video that you just watched. So what will you do? You will think back properly about the lesson and you will try and answer these questions and note down the answers in your notebook if you want. Okay. After that, we have another task waiting. You will also click on the link which you will find in the description box to fill up the Google form. So now what is the Google form children? It is nothing but a simple form. There are a few simple questions there about the video which you just saw and also about yourself. So these are the tasks now that you will have to complete after you watch each video. So children, wasn't that a very interesting lesson? I'm sure you learned a lot of new things in this lesson. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my video so that you will get to see all the videos which I keep posting regularly.